I, try, I explain Nomad on, on almost a daily basis because people that are out on the boat fishing, they're always asking about fishing experiences and that sort of thing. And so I, I usually, I, I have to explain this almost daily to people and, and, and try to get across to these guys what it's really like. I learned a lot when I showed up for my, my first job with Nomad. You know, we're in the, the shipyard in Cairns, and this mind-boggling mothership is on the hard stand. And I was, I was just sort of stunned. I got out of the car and I was going, this is just beyond anything that I've, I've ever experienced. So Scott's like the ultimate fishing guide. He's a marine biologist mixed with this massively enthusiastic fisherman. He sailed half the oceans in the world. He's seen it all, he's done it all, and he knows how to turn pretty much any day on the water into fun. And I've really never met anyone who can just bring it all together like that. It's incredible. All right. So Scott and I spent a lot of time sitting out in the Coral Sea together when we were guiding for Nomad Sport Fishing. And Scott always talked about tarpon as just the ultimate game fish. They had everything, and you know, seeing what goes on in Florida, it's it's pretty obvious that they're just an amazing sport fish. Well, I'd so wanted Damon to come over to the Florida Keys, and, and uh, a lot of the time I, you know, I was in the Coral Sea and watching these lures. All I can think about is how a tarpon or a snook or or some of our other species would respond. And uh, Damon, in typical fashion, you know, he's always go big or go home. So he shows up with a whole case of stuff, a big box of lures, and he's ready to go for it. Yeah, uh, the size of them is when they hit it like that on the surface, it's just fun. Oh, yep, got him. Nice, that's not a bad one. Beautiful, beautiful little fish. They're a very, very pretty fish, little sea trout. Nice little sea trout. There's quite a little bite of these going on here. So the first couple of days fishing, we went to all of Scott's honey holes, we went and fished the flats, we went out to the East Cape, all of the places that Scott knew the fish were gonna hang, we went and tried these locations, but it was still pretty early in the season and it obviously just wasn't happening. We weren't getting to see the fish. We weren't getting the lures in front of the fish. Um, it really got to the point where we were starting to realize the difficulty of trying to catch these fish on artificials. It's really not an easy thing to do. And we really felt like we'd probably bitten off a little bit more than we could chew at some points, but you just have to keep casting. And I think that's the, that's the thing for me with any sort of fishing, it's just persistence. It's keep casting, keep casting, keep casting. Oh! Got him! Oh, no! <laughs> Pulled the hook. So it's obviously a lot easier to catch tarpon on live bait, but Scott was convinced that we could catch big tarpon on riptides, mad scads, and a couple of the other lures in the range. So we got a report late one afternoon from one of Scott's buddies that uh, there was some really big fish getting around some of the bridges, but it was quite a long way down south of where we were. Uh, amazing numbers of fish that we see at the bridges, that's the food pipeline. It's the most efficient thing. The water is accelerating through the gap, and they can cruise in the gap, 
and the food is just arriving, you know, on the current. It's a really big tarpon that we're actually seeing just cruising under the boat here. They're extremely difficult to uh, convince to eat anything, really, and uh, they just love hanging around all this structure. The current's just funneling through here. There's bait, there's mullet, crabs, all sorts of bait fish flowing through here, and it's just a great feeding spot for them. Pretty cool place to fish. <laughs> Scott's got us onto a beautiful tarp, and we've just been casting around the bridges. Late afternoon, tide turns started going out, and the fish have really come on the chew. This guy just exploded on the surface. Just absolutely spectacular. He's had a few pretty good jumps here. Just hoping we can uh, get lucky and get him both side for a little look. Nice fish. Oh. He's gone. Man, these things are so tough. Had this thing on for the best part of 50 minutes and uh, he's just throwing the hooks. So Scott tells me it happens quite frequently. There's a, there's a lot of waiting involved. Anybody who's done this kind of fishing, whether it's bill fishing or, 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 or fishing for tarpon or other species, there's that when the moment comes and it's just this white water explosion and it'll really get your heart going. It's absolutely amazing. Got a really nice tarpon hooked up here. Just fishing along the edge of that bridge and it just all happened. Just absolutely demolished it on top and he's just charged off away from the bridge here. It's got some pretty big fish so this is uh, this is what it's all about. We've been on this fish for about an hour and 10 minutes now. The sun's faded. It's uh, getting into the evening. Scott's telling me this guy's a greenback. He just will not give up. It's uh, a pretty serious fight. We got out of these weed beds. He's taking us out into open water now, but man, tough fish. He's gone. Two hours into it, the old uh, fluorocarbon leader wore through. So yeah, the tarpon wins again. That is uh, a very, very challenging fish. But uh, anyway, there's plenty more back at that bridge, so. Here. I can't quite see this guy, but he's just nailed this riptide. This is pretty exciting stuff. Can't quite see where he's going here, but wow, he's coming at the boat. Beautiful little tarpon. Just nailed the riptide on the surface there. Tried a little night fishing under the bridge and uh, these tarpon are snapping pretty hard. It's just so much fun, these things just nailing lures on the surface. For me, it was very satisfying, the whole process to be able to you know, catch these really big fish, um, the smaller fish, but to be able to do it all on lures, I feel we really set out to, um, you know, we, we achieve what we set out to do and you can't always get the fairy tale finish to these trips when you fly halfway around the world to achieve something that's quite difficult. And getting the shot of the giant fish alongside the boat with the lure in its mouth, we realise is a really difficult thing to do, but the thrill of being able to you know, set out to try and achieve that, it's really lit a spark in me with these big tarpon and I just can't wait to come back and do it again with Scott and I know next time we're gonna get one. <laughs>